thanks to an increase in pro-life lawmakers, including the president, the human costs of abortion are now more talked about publicly. But it's not just politicians talking. Joining us, syndicated columnist Star Parker, who provided testimony before Congress earlier this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I love being with you, Lauren. You know that. <laughs> I love being with you, too. You said something so compelling yesterday. Slavery was, as abortion is, a crime against humanity. Like slavery, tension was created in the public square and in law concerning who qualified for natural rights worthy of protection. Very powerful. Representative Steve King, a Republican from Iowa, said he'd never heard that before. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting. We rarely get to make our case uh, for pro-life, for anti-abortion. Uh, until now. There is a window of opportunity for us to address it before the Congress because the last eight years the Congress had not been controlled by Republicans. Uh, Congressman King uh, is a conservative, he's a Christian, and he's the chairman of the Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution but and Civil But how did you come up with justice. that? Slavery, abortion? It's not rocket science. As I uh, commented when he asked the question, if you put Roe v. Wade next to the Dred Scott decision and take the titles off, they read almost verbatim. They're both both about humanity. This is property, not a person. That's what we're dealing with today. So the more we're equipped to see what happened during slavery, the more opportunities we have to dismiss the ideas of the left when they challenge us about this is settled law. Well, everyone thought Dred Scott was settled law, and it wasn't. You know, you said yesterday something very personal, and I'd like to play it on the air here for our viewers who know you well, and it is it is also very moving, goes to why you are where you are today. Let's take a listen. I was one such woman when years ago, lost in sexual recklessness, had four abortions without any counsel nor information from the abortion providers about the distinct humanity of the life that was growing within me. Wow, quite impressive. Is that what brought you here? Why did you change your mind to lobby for pro-life legislation? A Christian conversion changed my life. And it was fascinating as I believed all the lies of the left, uh, everything they say, criminal activity I was engaged in as a result, uh, sexual activity to land me in and out of abortion clinic after clinic. Interestingly, uh, I went into the same clinic twice and, that, and they still didn't give me any information and he recognized me. Uh, but um, <laughs> after a Christian conversion, I changed and I received new information according to the scripture. And a couple of years into that conversion, uh, the pulpit, the pastor mentioned abortion. And it was the first time I actually thought about it in my life. But because I had already heard that God was in Christ and that he was reconciling the world to himself, he doesn't count our sin against him, against us, I knew that, well, this is sin, but he's also forgiven this as well. So I had an opportunity to address it with the Lord, to recover myself. But then I became very passionate to say, then let's stop others from having to get to this place to where then they have to repent from this horrible crime against humanity. And now you're testifying on Capitol Hill. I know, it's wonderful. Star isn't it Parker, right? I know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's, that's true. <laughs> President for the Center for Urban Renewal and Education. Thanks, Star. You're welcome.